You get a call. It's your bank. They tell you you've been robbed. Your entire bank account is empty and you should immediately contact the authorities. In shock, you pull up your bank statements, but you find out you weren't robbed. Kodak just raised their prices again and you're a sucker for those sweet pastel tones. Okay, in all seriousness, I love film photography and for the majority of 2021 I only shot film. I fell in love with the results that were possible, but at some point I got fed up with the process of scanning and converting my film and getting inconsistent results despite me investing a lot of money and effort into this hobby. And that ultimately led me to try and find some other way. There had to be some way to get that look I so dearly loved while keeping the efficiency, flexibility and insane storage requirements of modern digital photography. I spent a bunch of time finding out how I can recreate the film look digitally and have been planning this video for a while now. Today I will show you everything from start to finish that you can do to give your photos that dreamy analog feel. Of course you can't perfectly replicate film with a digital sensor, they are just completely different. One is a physical strip with crystals on it that chemically react with photons, the other is a warning sign of the early stages of the AI uprising. But I don't want to clinically replicate anything, I just want to get somewhere in the general ballpark and replicate that vibe of analog images. So here is what you do. You take the cheapest UV filter you can find for your lens, I think this one was like 7 bucks, take a can of hairspray and at a distance of about 2 bananas you give it one or two short sprays on the outer side of the UV filter. Congrats, you've just made a Promist filter without paying 100 bucks for one. What this does is give a bloom effect around any direct light hitting your lens, similar to direct light hitting the crystals on a sheet of film. Sometimes the neighboring crystals also react and that's what we are now faking using this filter. Also if the effect is too strong you can wipe the hairspray off with water again and try again. Another option is to use vintage lenses with an adapter for your camera. Not only does this give you the character contrast and color rendering of the lenses that were used back then, it also gets you massive hipster points. And many of them are dirt cheap, so it'll be a nice change for your suffering bank account. Two days ago the evening light was really nice, so I went out for some street photography and to get some shots I could use for this video. Now of course I could have just used some of the tens of thousands of images I have on a hard drive right next to me, but I'll take any excuse to go out and take some bad photos. I'll talk about how I process these later on in the video. There is one important thing you need to consider when you are taking photos and want the analog look. Often when people shoot color film they purposefully overexpose the images. Film works in the exact opposite as digital sensors. While highlights are retained very well on film, all shadow information is quickly lost. Digital sensors on the other hand quickly lose highlight information just giving you a blown out white sky sometimes. But you can recover shadow information very well, especially when shooting raw. That's why in film photography it's a good idea to overexpose and in digital photography it's a good idea to underexpose. But I want you to just ignore whatever the experienced photographers on YouTube tell you. To replicate the film look we need to overexpose baby! You can either do that in Lightroom afterwards or you can also do it in camera. Just make sure not to blow out your highlights completely into oblivion because we we later on want to create a soft highlight fall off during processing. Talking about processing, if you have a Fujifilm camera, one great option is to use the film simulation features. But if you don't have a Fujifilm camera, don't worry, I have a bunch more options up my sleeve I'll show you in a minute. The great thing about these in-camera film simulations is that it's a lot like shooting film because you limit yourself to that one look while you're out taking photos. And it's a lot of fun trying out different film simulation recipes. But it's also really nice that you can already see how it looks with the processing while you are shooting. There is something so fun about shooting black and white and also having the viewfinder actually show you black and white. I've tried a bunch of different film simulation recipes from Fuji X Weekly and gotten some great results. By far my most used is the Portra 400 recipe for the X-T30 and I've gotten some amazing images with that. The thing is, I don't shoot with recipes that much anymore, because in many situations I like editing the raw images and I also have the ability to save any shots I've yeah, accidentally under or overexposed. So if you don't have a Fujifilm camera or would rather process your images in Lightroom, there are a couple of options out there. There are some presets you can get that I'm going to show you now, but after that I'm going to show you how you can easily make your own. R and I have some Lightroom presets you can buy with a couple of free presets you can download from them as well. These work pretty well and I've played around with their free demo presets 
presets, but I didn't like them enough to yeah, justify the pretty hefty price tag of buying the full set. Last week, a fellow small creator, Oliver Keys, has released his own Lightroom and Photoshop process for replicating the film look, and I really like the results. For just £8, you can buy his Lightroom profile and presets, or together with his Photoshop grain process, you can get it for £10. He isn't sponsoring me or anything, and I haven't even talked to him prior to this video, but I honestly think this is one of the best options out there. He nailed the color reproduction, and the images feel very film-like with the greenish tint in the shadows and the chromey warm tones. He also nailed the soft highlight falloff. Okay, I've also cranked the white balance pretty hard on this one to make it warmer. Yesterday I went on a bike ride and brought the X-T30 because the lighting was simply phenomenal. And I came to a conclusion about something that I've been thinking about for a very long time now. I've actually rewritten this video like three times, but here I am changing it again. <laughs> Over the past half year I've been developing two Lightroom presets of my own for replicating the film look. One has more Kodak-like colors which I call F400K and one has more Fujifilm-like tones and I call it F400F. Yeah, I know these names look like error codes but whatever. <laughs> I just made these for fun because I absolutely loved the look and I wanted to try something, but they turned out really well surprisingly and I've been tweaking them for the past 6 months. After some thinking I decided there is no point in keeping these to myself, so I have now officially made an online store where you can buy this preset pack for a couple of dollars. Because this is my first actual product and my first time trying to run an online store and I still need to figure out how the hell do I run an online store. Yeah, I see this as more of a trial run. And that's why for the launch I'm giving 50% off currently because I feel like I still need to figure some stuff out. <laughs> and yes, I have spent way too much time on creating this fake film packaging in Blender and rendering out animations. I have absolutely no idea if anybody is even remotely interested in buying these presets, but if you are it would go a super long way in supporting the channel and allowing me to continue to make these videos. I don't want you to feel like I just made this video to turn it into an ad or something and that's why I'm right now gonna show you how you can make a film-like preset in Lightroom on your own. Film is often said to have amazing dynamic range, which is true, but that dynamic range in a final image file often gets lost because the scans you get from your lab are often pretty bad and don't have great dynamic range at all. Just look at this comparison between the lab scan and my own scan. But actually, that's the look I want to go for here, giving a bit of disposable camera feel to the images. Let's directly head into the tone curve in Lightroom. Pull up the black point a bit and the white point down a bit. Film usually doesn't reach true white or true black. Then we pull up the mids a far bit and then obliterate any information in the deep shadows. We want a really steep fall off here in the dark parts of the image because, as I said, film doesn't retain shadow information very well and the scanner in your lab is doing its absolute worst to get more information out of the negative. Then in the HSL tab you increase the red, green and magenta saturation a bit and decrease the rest because those are usually the colors that will be a lot more prominent with the Fujifilm film stock, for example C200. And in the color grading tab you can give the midtones some magenta and the shadows and highlights some green because that's very typical for Fujifilm colors. If you want to replicate more of a Kodak film stock I would give it a bit more cyan in the shadows and make it warmer in the highlights. And give it some warmth in the mids. <laughs> I'm so stupid, it's been a long day. <laughs> then just blast the grain slider to your liking or apply a grain overlay in Photoshop and you're good to go. Well I paid for the whole grain slider so of course I'm gonna use the whole thing. You should of course change the exposure and white balance as fitting for each shot and of course some tweaking is needed here and there. Playing around with the hue and luminance sliders also might be a good idea. But this is a great starting point already. You have now successfully made a photo taken with 4 grand worth of camera gear look like it was taken on a $15 disposable camera. <laughs> and I'm not gonna judge you for wanting to do that, because I wanted to do it so much that I spent too many hours experimenting over the past months and now I even made a video about it. You can follow me on Instagram if you're interested or just go watch this video, that's at least twice as good as this one was. Okay, bye! <laughs>